uh, let's talk about med medical debt right now. No doubt you know someone, maybe yourself. Let us know in the chat here how many of you have been dealing with um, high medical bills. Or maybe you haven't even wanted to go and seek additional help uh, for you, because you don't want to have to pay these exorbitant medical bills. COVID obviously saddled a lot of people with an enormous amount of debt, unfortunately, uh, during COVID. Um, insurance companies paid up a certain part, but then not enough beyond that. So it left people uh, bankrupt. Well, now Americans, thankfully, will no longer have to see medical debt on their credit reports. So this is okay. I mean, this is one step in the right direction, but it's certainly not wiping away medical debt as it relates to the pandemic or anything else. This is a move that would remove more than $88 billion in debt from your consumer records. I'm curious how many people watching right now, let us know in the chat, have have medical debt that's affecting their overall credit score, let us know in the chat. And have you also checked recently to see if it's still there? Because Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, the three major credit reporting agencies have now all agreed to remove 70% of the medical debt from their consumer scores, which I don't get. Like, why did you guys stop at 70? Well, because they're defining this as unexpected medical debt. So let's say you have long since suffered from a pre-existing condition like cancer or MS or something like that, and your bills continue to rack up. That's not necessarily unexpected. That's just American healthcare is super expensive. Americans don't really get any help with surging prices. The government refuses to fix that, but it's still your fault. That, that continues to remain on your credit. But let's say you had a sudden injury, you had um, a car accident and you needed an ambulance ride, which is so, so expensive. These types of sudden medical debt that you could not have budgeted for will no longer go on your credit score. You, that doesn't mean you don't have to pay them. You still will be on the hook for paying them and the creditors will continue to chase you, but it will not negatively affect your credit score. So many people in our chat, Irish over on Twitch says, I have medical debt that was messing up my credit. Um, so many people says, Elizabeth says, my son does. Um, Becky, uh, Becky, uh, sorry, uh, Betty. Betty says, I am fighting cancer. I have very high medical bills. So sorry to hear that, Betty. I don't think that this would count, again, because if she's been fighting cancer, that's not an unexpected... Med I mean, of course, nobody expects to get cancer, but if it's something that's been mounting, then I don't think the credits... I mean, this is not necessarily a generous move. Um, I think it's interesting, though, that they're going to say, we realize that American health insurance and health providers surge prices in order to basically screw consumers. We understand that like if you get, say you get hit by a car and you need an ambulance, that's a three to four figure bill, right? Sometimes minimum $3,000. Um, and you did not obviously budget to take an ambulance ride that you needed. And so these are the types of things. Like, So instead of like lobbying Congress to make it so that you didn't that that nobody could surge prices to gouge consumers. No, they're just going to take it off your credit score. Edward Smith in well, our chat says, "I check my medical bills twice a month." Like that's America. Like it's so sad that we have to do that. You know? Well, and they Why? should Why like do you say that? they should not have like you should not be to check his medical bills twice a month. Like he you shouldn't, shouldn't have be to blocked from participating in the economy because you got. It just happened to have cancer or MS or something that you can't right. even, that's beyond your control. And all of a sudden you can't participate in the economy. That's, that's BS. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely BS. I mean, let me, we can get into the hypocrisy of the United States system and, and the, the entire structure that, you know, they make absolute bank of big pharmaceutical companies making billions of dollars, of course, on the backs of people. And then, of course, in other countries that you go to that have a medical system in place that you're not paying that. I mean, like our daughter, uh, you know, in Europe just recently had a pneumonia and had to take a hot, an ambulance ride, had to spend, what, four days in the hospital. And the bill was, what, $50? Well, $53. it was only be, the, the bill for 50 euro was because I took her to a private hospital for um, emergency. And then they sent her to a public hospital where they thought the doctors were the best. And they sent her in an ambulance because she had oxygen problems. And they said, you are going to have to pay for this ambulance. It's 140 euro. And I just wanted to laugh. If I wasn't so stressed about my daughter being sick, I would have laughed right in her face because that there is there, there are laws against price gouging for that service, right? So that company could not charge me $3,000, $5,000 for an ambulance ride. Why is that allowed in the United States? 
sure, it's nice that will be taken off your credit card credit score now, but you still will be on the hook to pay it. You still will get that bill. Right. right? Well, and it well, is has, still allowed to charge that much. This is what I'm sort of pointing out here. Go ahead, David. Has anybody been tracking the inflation prices on the medical f- world? Like what we're getting charged for things now during this time of inflation? Like has that all gone up too? Do we know? We know that medical bills have, 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 have hit a record. So, I mean, just add up, you know, medical costs during the pandemic and over the past three months, I saw an article mm-hmm. about a month ago, medical costs that are an all time high, an all time yes. high during a pandemic. I mean, so I almost everything. feel like I feel like these companies are probably more celebrating than anything because the cost of the goods hasn't gone up, you know, for them, for that kind of stuff yet that we know of. But they're going to start charging people because they're like, oh, they're saying the interest rates are high. Let's spike these prices. You no, know, you know members of Congress on. and, you know, members of Congress who were who campaigning on this issue, Kirsten Cinema specifically, right, of Arizona. Democrat by name was campaigning on this idea or meant, you know, talking about going after prescription drug prices. Of course, then when that that lobby funnels hundreds of thousands of dollars to her campaign, then when she has the opportunity to vote on that and make sure that we can fight for high pharmaceutical costs, she votes against it. She says she's not going to make that a part of her plan. That was something she wasn't going to support. Why? Because she gets money from the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this is the kind of stuff that should be illegal in the United States, and it's not. And this is why we have these larger problems. But to Natalie's point, you're going to still pay these damn medical bills. You're going to still be on the hook for them. And as many people said here, they've tried to, like, file bankruptcy. And, and, And from what I understand... The number of medical bankruptcies right now is through the roof. It's at an all time high, according to data released like three weeks ago. So medical bankruptcies, bankruptcy in the United States right now. Sure, you can't do that for your student loan. Yeah, you can still do it for medical for medical bills. Doug S. in the chat points out that 140 euro, what I paid for an ambulance is what you'd pay for an aspirin here in the U.S. And in fact, that's uh, there is truth to that. When I had my first child and asked for a Tylenol, it was billed at three hundred dollars for just two little Tylenols that my medical insurance covered it. But that's what they billed it. That money did take place. And I paid my 10 percent copayment. It's well, crazy. and those bags of saline, those bags of saline that almost everybody gets when you're in a hospital to keep you hydrated is like, I think it's 20 to 40 bucks in the UK and it's 700 here. Wow. That's a yeah, good was, saline. Wow. There was a, uh, NPR did a, a kind of a long running series a couple of years back on, on the rising medical costs. And one of the, one of the stories they highlighted was this woman that had, uh, she, she like went through and like itemized her, her medical bill and she saw this like. She had like several screws, like little tiny, itty bitty, tiny titanium screws put in her leg when she broke it. And they charged her like something like thirty five hundred dollars per screw uh, was the just for just for the screws themselves. Wow. So she did some digging and found out that the, the purchase price from the manufacturer was like two bucks. Oh Whoa. My <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Did you know that the royal baby, like Kate Middleton's first child that is heir to the throne, the medical bill and and it's, you know, socialized medicine in Britain, um, their medical bill was like 1300 pounds, which is like, you know, $1,500 for the royal treatment to have a baby. Right. Wow. Whereas me, who had just a, a non royal baby, um, my medical bills were in the thousands. It's crazy. I Just would say have... Miles. Miles is a royal baby. He's well, a royal baby. I was going to say baby. Miles. If you're listening, she didn't mean that, right? He's a royal. <laughs> he's a royal baby. And but uh, back to my question. I had a real quick question. Can you file bankruptcy on medical debt? Yes, I believe you can. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I know you can't on chat. student loan debt, but yeah, no, you can still do it on medical debt. Um, okay. But uh, you know, we and we just had someone in the chat just said they had to file bankruptcy because of medical debt. Um, MCATs. Yeah, I filed Chapter Seven 12 years ago. My credit is still in the 600s. That's crazy. Hmm. That's crazy. Sweet Vintage says I was charged nine hundred dollars for an ambulance ride. Um, um, unbelievable. Well, that's better. That's better than uh, I you guess. Know. But it depends. Are you right across the street from the hospital? Like, how far were you? Right. You mentioned someone you knew, uh, a friend of yours, had to take a, an air v- or a helicopter flight. Right. It was like that's my brother. Fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. Oh, my gracious. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a membership program for the price of a cup of coffee once a month. You can support independent journalism just by going to morninginvest.com slash join. You get access to exclusive videos, plus the ability to join and chat with us live. We really appreciate your subscription and you are supporting independent journalism.